Finally getting ready to pull this bed off the old truck here. First thing I'm gonna do is get underneath there and pull the return line off the hydraulics and drain all the hydraulic fluid out. I know it's got some uh, milky hydraulic fluid in it. So we'll deal with that and then we'll start unbolting things. And I think there's only a couple wires I'll have to snip out of the way and she'll come right off. There we go. Some more fluid out of there. Oh, yep. There's the fountain. There's all the fluid. All right. More in there than I thought still. While this thing is still draining, I am going to run a ratchet strap around the subframe of the dump bed and the box frame. That way when I lift the whole unit off, the subframe doesn't hinge down as the dump bed goes up. So uh, I'm just going to sneak a strap underneath the subframe here. There's about a three quarter inch gap. I'll sneak that across there and uh, hook everything together. Should be about enough slack. Feed the end back through and we'll put the binder down there underneath in between the frame rails. I was originally just gonna weld some tabs to hold them together and cut them back off, but started looking and I figured the ratchet strap's probably just as easy. And I don't have to grind or cut anything. Okay, there it is. I just hooked the ends together and uh, give her a few more clicks here. I think that's all we're going to get out of it. And then now when I lift that off, that's squeezing those two frame rails together. All right, she stopped dripping. That is our, I don't know, six, eight gallons of nasty hydraulic fluid that we got out of our dump truck. I'm guilty of knowing that was in there for a long time, but it worked just fine with it. And I wasn't too worried about it hurting it. Hurting it now. We'll put some nice fresh stuff in the new truck. Okay, now there's five half inch bolts on each side. I'm gonna undo those right quick and she will be ready to come off. Uh, there might be a wire I have to clip yet.
But other than that, she'll be ready. Digging the torch out, I'd probably just cut all these off. All right, enough playing around. Time for the big guns. All the bolts cut, just kind of knock them out. This side turned out a lot better. Didn't put any gouges in anything, so just get a punch, knock these right out. All right, well, it looks like it could rain any minute, but uh, brought the hoe over here. Getting ready to lift her off. My buddy should be here in a minute. Help me guide this thing so I don't smack the cab on it. We'll get her lifted right off of there. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, it's raining pretty good now, but uh, that's not much present.
Well, there you have it. This dump bed was a hell of a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be. The hoe does not like it too well. But we managed. Got her off there with uh, minimal damages. We ripped the wires out of my junction box on this truck. And we put a little bit of red paint up against the cab over here, you know, but she'll buff, she'll buff, even the glass. Still in one piece, but she's got some red paint on her. Oh, and I ripped the disconnect switch apart. I gotta fix that before I can even move the truck. Come on, let's go. Come on, come on. Come on. Good boys. Good boys. Give me five. Good boy. Okay. Okay, so while I got this bed right here, and I'm going to be working on it anyway, there's some of this extra garbage that I never put on here. That was stuff that was on there when I got this truck, and I've just never had the time to cut it off of there. So it's extra weight, and it's ugly, and I think I've caught this one on, with the machine a couple times, loading over the side with a skid loader. But uh, we'll just cut those off with a torch and this headache rack. I'm going to slice it right down the middle here, the whole way across. And then I'm going to add 10 inches in there in the middle to lift it up so that it'll clear over the top of the cab of the International. Timber. Wow, my two by four held it. Look at this. Both ends are cut through, and that two by six this I just wedged there is the only thing holding it up. So now what do we do? We'll throw something heavy at it, of course, and knock the board out. I ain't going under there. I think it weighs a few hundred pounds. There we go. Okay, it's been a rigmarole ordering these pieces here. But uh, hopefully I finally got the right pump connection kit. These buyer's parts are hard to find online. Some of these more obscure ones, harder to locate. But uh, this is the third one I've gotten now. Hopefully this one works. Okay, well, after some frustration and uh, some mind boggling, I finally got this uh, connection kit fitted right. I was trying to put it on upside down the whole time. I was getting a little angry, it wasn't fitting. Quit eating rocks, moron. No. Quit eating shit. Bad. Puppy problems. This is meatball, by the way. He is a meatball. Look at me. Hey. Yeah. 
So anyway, now I gotta kind of take these bolts out of the end of the pump here and uh, mount this bracket for the cable. This thing sticks up there and slides forward and backward. So pop these bolts off. everything in my life that turned out to be way more difficult than I anticipated. But here's the assembled product here. You got your cable coming in there and then uh, your actuator down here for the spool valve that's built onto the pump. So in the cab I'll pull the cable and we'll raise and lower. That's neutral. There's your dump. Okay, the cable's all connected now. Let's see if it works. Seems like it's working good. Okay, got my piece of steel here for the headache rack extension. We're gonna rip it down with a plasma cutter. Contact. Here she is, finished welded and painted up. Uh, it's got some runs in it. You can see the brush strokes from the paint that was underneath what I covered up. But it's a dump body. It's gonna get scratched and abused and gravel dumped on it every day. So no sense fretting about that. It's not. It's not a show car. But I'm not real happy with how some of my welds turned out up here. This was like a bad gap I left up top from a rough cut on that piece of plate. So I was bridging a gap like quarter inch the whole way across there. So that wasn't real fun. Plus I had the wind blowing my shielding gas away. Some of it turned out nice. There's a good weld right there. That's a pretty one I'll put my name on. But all in all, she, uh, she turned out. Hopefully we can get it mounted on the truck pretty quick here. Next thing we're gonna do here today, we're gonna run our airline for a trailer hitch. So we've got these, uh, this used to be a road tractor, like I said, so these two fittings here should be your uh, air going back for your service air and emergency air. So we'll get started running those.
These are half-inch DOT fittings with the uh, quick connect for the plastic hose. All right, let's run our line. So we've got our hose here, cut the ends nice and square. Stick the first one in here, I'll drop the whole roll down here. Okay, I've just pulled it up through the frame rails to get the length right. We can just shove her up in here. Just shove it till it feels it quick. And that's locked in there. Good and tight. Good and tight. Run one more like that and we'll zip tie it all down here and put it in the grommets like it's supposed to be. Leaving it a little long because I'm not sure what we're going to do back here for air fittings just yet. Okay, the last thing I have to run is uh, a two piece of two wire here. This is, uh, I think, 8 or 10 gauge, whatever. This is just going to be for my trailer connection. One's going to be uh, power from the brake unit. And I think the other one is ground, I want to say. I don't remember, but I remember it's two wires that need to run back here. I'm just trying to get everything done before I uh, set the bed on here, and it's harder to get to. It's nice and open right now. Now I'm going to install this uh, junction box to make it easier when I add the 7-pin connector because I don't have it yet. But uh, it's just a box to keep everything protected from the elements. Okay, well that turned out way easier than expected. And that never happens. I was able to just steal a couple holes off of cross members and use some washers and shim it up in it bolted right on so I didn't have to drill anything. Start pulling the wires back to here and uh, getting everything hooked up. Okay, I got uh, all the wiring for now in the box. Here's what she looks like. So now all I have to do when I get my seven-way connector is uh, pull the cover back off and run the wires. Make a little wire loom from the seven pin down to the box here. And uh, it's real easy to hook up that way. No cutting and splicing. So we'll throw the cover on now and uh, start working on something else. Gonna weld on these turn signal brackets real quick. But not before I drill them out, stupid. Okay, now I can weld it on. I just popped a couple extra holes in there.
Bam. All right, well, if you're watching this, part three is uh, being edited right now, and it's going to be up very quickly. So make sure you guys, uh, if you're not already, subscribe. Make sure you don't miss that. And uh, the next uh, part three is going to be the last part. It's uh, it's done. It's on the road. So you guys can check that out as soon as I get it posted. Thanks for watching.